This is a podcast from the Nuffield Department of Medicine. Dr Cecilia Lindgren explores the links between obesity and genetics. Hello Cecilia. How much of obesity can we blame on our genes? Obesity is generally measured uh, by looking at somebody's body weight by a height in metres squared and it's a measure of general adiposity. Um, obesity occurs when somebody is eating too much and exercising too little. There is uh, epidemiological studies that suggest that about 70% of the variability of BMI is due to genetics. However, with recent research that we have done where we have found about 30 genes and gene regions that are associated to BMI, we can only explain about 10% of that variability. Uh, if you look at the individual, a person that has all risk alleles that we have identified and you compare that person to another individual of the same height that have no risk alleles, the person with the risk alleles will weigh between 8 to 9 kilograms more than the other one. So it's still a, you know, a substantial effect even if it translates to a little proportion of the heritability. Is there a difference between men and women? Yes, so uh, women are generally slightly more obese than men but if you look at men and women you will see that our body shapes and our body fat patterning is quite different. It's quite interesting if you look at women they tend to have a more pear shaped body shape where they aggregate fat more around the buttocks and the thighs where men usually are more apple shaped where they aggregate fat more uh, in and around the stomach. Uh, we usually measure fat distribution by looking at waist circumference measured by a simple tape measurement and hip circumference measured by another t a simple tape measurement and taking the ratio between the two, the waist to hip uh, measurement. Epidemiological studies have shown that about half of the variance in waist to hip ratio is genetically determined uh, and there are indications that this is higher again in women than in men. We have uh, uh, recently seen in our genetic studies of waist heap ratio where we have identified 14 re gene regions um, associated to waist heap ratio that half of these loci have a much stronger effect on women uh, than it has in men. And that's really interesting. We don't know exactly why that is, um, but it's sort of pointing towards new biology. How does the dis distribution of fat influence vulnerability to diabetes? Waste hip ratio or fat distribution is correlated on a population level with uh, adverse metabolic outcomes as we call it and with that I mean age related diabetes or type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disorders and even some cancers. The underlying biological mechanisms by how this is happening is not yet totally clear. It is however interesting that the 14 gene regions that I mentioned before uh, contain genes that have been linked with cholesterol uh, insulin levels, insulin resistance, all of which are correlated with type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular outcomes. So there seems to be some correlation also on a genetic level, but we don't know how that works yet. What are the most important lines of research that have developed in the past five or ten years? From my own personal point of view, uh, during the last five years, I think that the huge, uh, biggest step forward was that funding agencies allowed us to go larger and do more global scale studies, or global scale genetic studies I should say. So we started to screen the entire genome by looking at about 3 million genetic variants in thousands of individuals, something we couldn't dream about doing 10 years ago. And that has been really successful. It started out uh, here in Oxford actually where we identified the first gene that was linked to obesity, the FTO gene, so our team did that. And that success was rapidly followed by the identification of the second obesity gene, MC4R, which is also a gene uh, affecting monogenic forms, extreme forms of early onset obesity. And now to date we have more than 30 gene regions that affect overall obesity. The second thing would be that it's getting more and more recognised now that overall obesity does not give you the full picture it's not explaining everything. So fat distribution has a distinct and independent effect on metabolic consequences of obesity. And with the 14 gene regions that we have identified there, one of the most exciting things is that it sort of builds on already existing evidence that 
uh, fat distribution and fat patterning are affecting pathways that have to do with fat cell growth and also which fat depots on the body uh, where you're accumulating fat if you gain weight. And as I talked about before, that's closely linked to uh, cardiovascular disease and type 2 diabetes. So that's really exciting and that's something also that is just emerging over the last few years. Could this lead to better therapies? I think that the best and maybe easiest therapy for obesity is to eat less and exercise more. However, as we can see in the general population today, that's not really working. So we need to come up with better management strategies to help people. Um, I think that our data is a first stepping stone towards understanding why some people are more prone than others to gain weight, to gain weight in unfavorable positions on the body. And when we understand that, hopefully that can lend itself to better therapeutics and better preventive actions. Why does your line of research matter? Why should we put money into it? Today, obesity is surging in the population. I think uh, I read numbers last week in the UK that the average BMI is 25.4 in adults, which means that the average British person is now overweight. And on top of that, a quarter of adults are clinically obese. With that said, it means that half of the population has an increased risk for all of these disorders that I've mentioned before, including cardiovascular disease and cancer and so forth. So that's a big impact, a socioeconomic impact that obesity confers. Interestingly, again, if you look at adult individuals, BMI is not a direct measure of adiposity, it's a surrogate measure. So if you add on the component of the fat distribution, which is getting more and more recommended in various guidelines and NHS are talking about that too, you will see that about 20% of adults are now in the high risk category of getting these sort of metabolic disorders and that's something that is costing the society billions of pounds and it's also a social and personal stigma attached to being obese and having an unfavourable body shape I think. How does your research fit into translational medicine within the department? So my hope is that the um, gene regions and the different genes that we find will lend itself to the first stepping stone towards treatment and when we can identify the underlying mechanisms and pathways that uh, different groups within the department that work with translational aspects of medicine and also pharmaceutical companies can utilise that information and bring better therapies and also better prevention. Thank you, Cecilia. Thank you. Thank you.